Welcome martial arts fans from around the world or anybody who just likes having fun. This is Battle Zone Countdown. We are live at the Renaissance Waverly Hotel for the Battle of Atlanta. One of the most prestigious martial arts tournaments in America, in the world. And we are here to break down the action, give you guys a preview of the high level martial arts skill that you're going to be seeing tonight. Mallory, I can't wait, man. Listen, Jackson, all day long you've had action going on right behind these doors. And as you can see over our shoulder, we're cleaning up right now for some of the action that you had at the battle today. This is the 55th Battle of Atlanta, and it hasn't let down since I've been going. It's in the 20th, I mean the 20th anniversary, 30th anniversary. Things have been going on. Mary, we have Mary Amato with us who was just hanging out. I said, Mary, what have been your thoughts for today? Oh, my gosh. My thoughts today, it's been crazy. We had just finished the runoffs division for the for the juniors and we have the adults competing. It's been crazy last night. We went so long because there's so many competitors and everyone's doing really great. Josh, what about you? Uh, same for me. You know, they say that all roads lead to here. Well, it is here, guys. You know, Battle Mania tonight. Right. Uh, man, saw some great fighting in action today. And uh, as Mary said, just seen some electric forms. And I can't wait for Battle Mania tonight because it is going to be unstoppable on stage oh, this yeah. evening. And before we start breaking down the action, I got to make sure that we give our crew a pat on the back. We've got some awesome yes. friends up here. Yes. Mary Amato, somebody that was a great competitor, forms, weapons, all the extreme stuff, the traditional represent team, oh, AKA. Yeah. Oh, she yeah. was on this stage many times. Then of course, we've got Mallory Woods, our resident point fighting <laughs> expert. that will be you. breaking down some of the fights and making some picks for you guys tonight with that point fighting action and the always, always. entertaining. Always. The coach and founder of Team XL, we've got Josh Buford representing the great state of Mississippi. Silk, baby, this is going to be so much fun. And uh, you guys may have seen me on Battle of Atlanta stage spinning around a green stick. I, hey. I was decent at it, people told me. It but okay. Hey, it was okay. Tonight, it's all it about hey, some of these athletes. Don't shortchange yourself. <laughs> the Jackson Rudolph, ladies um, and gentlemen. I tell you, well, thank always you. show stopping right there. Absolutely. I appreciate it. And hey, you know, we can talk about the glory days that we all had on stage all we want. But tonight is really about the action that we're going to see from some of these high level athletes. Mary, I know you were watching some of those junior runoffs. Yeah. Did you notice any ju juniors that really jumped out to you as like those up and coming? Like you can't wait to see them move into the adult division. Absolutely. So one of actually my favorite runoff divisions that um, well, I will probably remember forever is the boys 14 to 17 forms, yeah. CMX forms runoffs. Most of them, most of them were actually on Team AKA, which was really, really amazing to see. Not only my teammates, but my students all competing together and supporting each other. And Colin O'Brien was the winner of that division. And I believe, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't know for sure, but I believe this is his first time on stage at a NASCAR division, and I am so extremely proud of him, and I'm pumped to see him tonight. And that's one of the beautiful things about this sport and about the Battle Zone Finals. Anybody can win on any given yes, day, sir. right? And so Colin breaking through, making it on stage in the forms division. Yeah. I've seen his weapon stuff before. I've seen him fighting. He's one of those guys that can do it all. So a very well-earned shout-out. It's going to be awesome to see him in the finals. Absolutely. And it was a tough division. Oh, and yeah. I have to give a shout-out to all the boys that was in that division and the rest of the runoffs, but especially Colin for this one. It was really special, especially alongside his teammates. I'm really proud of him. And from new faces to established superstars. We've got some big names in the sport martial arts world that are gonna be on the show tonight. In the segments ahead, we're gonna be breaking that down. So stay tuned after a word from our sponsors. Clear, clear. Killed All right. Good job, where did that, that come from? So segment two? It just happened. How can sport karate get better? How can sport karate get better? Yeah. Who's starting that one? Who's starting I am, yeah, I'm starting that one. <laughs> I gotta remember to finish it. It's me, Mallory Woods, and we're going to go and cover a topic. As I mentioned before, it's the 55th Battle of Atlanta. Now, 
I've been around, I think, since the 25th Battle of Atlanta, maybe even the 20th. It's been a many, many years fighting in the Georgia Dome, fighting in the Omni. But one of the things I'd like to talk about is how do we make this sport better? Like, for example, we have seen the talent of these individuals go from here to way up. The juniors that were learning the tricks that the experts were doing, and it was fun. And the fighters that looked up to the Raymond Daniels, the Jason Tanks, the Borellis, uh, the Nasty Andersons, so on and so forth. Mm. And now they're doing things that are simple. But what do we do to progress this sport? Jackson, what are your thoughts on that? How do we get this sport to the next level? Well, I think that it starts right here. Mm -hmm. Like stuff like this, like what we're doing with the Battle Zone Finals, this is huge for the sport. For so long, if you wanted to see some of the best in the world at sport martial arts competition, you had to come to a tournament, yeah. which, by the way, is one of the best things about what we do. Right. This yep. sport has better access to the highest level professional athletes than any other sport. You can't go to an NBA game and have an opportunity to train with LeBron James before the game starts. Mm -hmm. You can come to the Battle of Atlanta and have an opportunity to train with Bailey Murphy before you go in the ring and fight, before he goes in the ring and fight. Absolutely. And you know what? If you're the same age and weight, you can sign up to fight against it, right? That is if you want that it. is so unique. Well, most people don't want to. Yeah. But that is one of the things that is so unique about what we do, and that's why we all want this sport to get so much more recognition. There's no other sport where you can do that. But used to, you had to show up to have those opportunities. Now, through the efforts of the Battle of Atlanta, SportMartialArts.com, Black Belt Magazine, Century Martial Arts, all of these different entities that are working together to bring sport karate to a larger audience through streaming, through broadcasting, multiple platforms, it's this that is the first step to helping these athletes get the recognition that they deserve. Mary, what are your thoughts? What do you, what do you think? You're coming from not only from a ladies' perspective, yep. but also from forms and weapons. Well, I have I have a perspective I definitely want to share, but I wanted to add on to Jackson. Yeah. Speaking of platforms, make sure you guys follow all of the Battle of Atlanta social media and the YouTube so you can watch the live streams and follow along as we go. But <laughs> something I really, really wanted to talk about today with how this work could grow is female presence in martial arts. Yes. Mm. Now, I have been competing on the NASCA circuit and local circuits, especially the Battle of Atlanta since 2012. I remember my first tournament in the Battle of Atlanta in 2012, but a way to help the sport grow is to have good female leaders for not only our youth girls, but for our youth boys. Children need to see the adult leaders have equality, have, mm -hmm. have equal space, have equal opportunity to win the same divisions. Right now, we don't have that. And, and you can see there's so many young girls competing and there's not that many adult women. So hopefully, hopefully we could start at the Battle of Atlanta to really, really progress and give these females an opportunity, even if it's just giving the same amount of money or same amount of opportunities. And this love for the sport, we can share with everybody if we can expand our opportunities for everybody. And I think there's a great opportunity for some of the young lady warriors, those mm -hmm. young female martial artists, to see some of the talent if they tune into the Battle Zone Finals tonight. Exactly. We've exactly. got Haley Glass. We've got mm -hmm. my wife, your friend. You were one of her bridesmaids. Gabrielle Rudolph's going to be on stage, mm -hmm. right? So we've got all of these great role models in the women's division that are going to be on stage tonight. And I think that's a great place to start for yes. some of these young female martial artists yeah. that are looking for those role models. And the more of those females that we can get to show up to the tournaments mm -hmm. and support, that's what's going yeah. to lead to those opportunities, more exactly. equality. Exactly. It has a trickle-down effect across the board. There we go. Well, of course, we have to go to our fourth member here, Josh what do you have for us? You know, uh, just to piggyback a little bit off you guys, I think two things that are super important, just like any sport, you know, how do you make other sports better? You have to kind of take a look at that. Two things come to mind. One is experience. And just like you're mm. talking about, show up to the events, show up to the tournaments, compete, do these different things. Uh, the second thing is training. Uh, you, you know, you mentioned having an opportunity to come to somewhere like the Battle of Atlanta and train with a, you, you know, with somebody like Bailey. But uh, there's also other opportunities out there where you can get, connect virtually with somebody like Jackson or Mary yeah, and, and other world-class athletes uh, to be able to, to do that training. And the third thing is a wild card, I think education. Mm -hmm. I, I, think, uh, I think that's where, Jackson, you are clutch. Mallory, I've learned so much from you this weekend <laughs> sitting down with you. Uh, but Jackson, with your podcast and, and your articles that you're posting, uh, I think that is doing a tremendous job of educating those out there that maybe know a little bit about the sport, but as they continue to learn more and more, I think it just makes the sport that much better. 
Well, one thing is that the conversation doesn't stop here with us. Right. The conversation yes. now shifts everyone that is watching this. You can comment on if you've got great ideas. That's where a lot of the great ideas come from, everything. We want to make sure, please post to it. We want to hear your ideas. And we'll be right back with another segment after these messages. Welcome back to the Battle Zone Countdown. This is Mary, and we're going to talk about all of our favorite <laughs> Battle of Atlanta memories. I think I'm going to start. And we all, I'm sure, have a million martial arts related memories, but mine is actually a little bit different. Battle of Atlanta, this was actually my first time since 2012 that I took an airplane to Atlanta, all the way from Chicago. So I will always cherish the road trips my family and I took and the the weird and unique and amazing places that we saw along the way and even stopping to see family. I feel like that that atmosphere adding to the excitement of driving to the martial arts tournament created so many core memories that I'm just so grateful that the Battle of Atlanta got to bring to me. What about you, Jackson? Well, for me, it comes down to what goes down on the mat. Like, there was nothing in my martial arts career like being able to go on a stage at one of these large tournaments and perform for a crowd. And I'll tell you what, there is no crowd like the fans that come out here yeah. for the Battle of Atlanta. Oh, yeah. We've got a passionate sport karate fan base down here. Yes. And I'll admit, there was one year at the Battle of Atlanta that I played to the fans some. I used Dev went down to Georgia. Mm. I remember that. <laughs> I remember that. And one of my favorite forms that I've ever done. And the reason was because it wasn't even necessarily anything about the bow form. There's things about the bow form that I would go back and wish that I could change, right? But the reaction that the crowd had when that form was going on and the energy that you could feel as an athlete. And as you watch through your screen today, as you watch the battle zone and you see these athletes, that energy is palpable. And that's one of the special things about sport martial arts is that there's so much energy in the room from the athlete, the intensity that they bring to a performance, the energy of the crowd. And Battle of Atlanta is one of the best atmospheres in the entire sport. And I cannot wait to see these athletes soak it all in. You know, I'm going to go ahead and give my favorite battle moment. I'm going to take it back a number of years. Being one of the most seasoned competitors up here, I'll take it back to when we were at the Georgia Dome. And I remember the lightweight division had 55 competitors in it. Woo! And I was there waiting with a forms competitor by the name of Kim Doe. Now, this is the homework mm. portion. If you don't know who Kim Doe is, once this is over, you start Googling. Kim Doe was one of the most dynamic influential kata and weapons performers out there. His stuff was of legend, not only for the way he did his, his kata, but also the sound effects, everything he did. There was a Street Fighter form that he had, which he took and sampled uh, sound and effects from the arcade game. But Kim Do also liked to throw down. He was one of the guys, as he's sitting in here, we're, at, we're talking to each other and we're looking, there's 53 other people we've got to go through. And I said, oh, what are you going to do today? He says, uh, I'm going to do something special. I said, well, who goes first? Well, I don't know. Well, of course, we didn't have this great, like, mad action uh, mm -hmm. system that we use today. We drew lots, and Kim went first. So I said, okay, all right, uh, I'll follow your lead. Wh whatever you do, I will do something better during my fight. So Kim was fighting this young man, and I remember he had on a camo gi. Kim proceeds to front flip and kick this guy in the <laughs> face, and he knocked him out. Oh, my God. In the first round of that division, and I just looked at him and said, you got it. I, 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 got, I got nothing that's going to beat that. <laughs> oh. If you can find that clip, please leave a link to it in the comment section because it's love absolutely legendary. Josh, good luck beating that. Yes, yes. <laughs> I don't know if I can top that or not, but I am going to come at it from a different perspective, okay? My favorite Battle of Atlanta memory is personal. 
Uh, it comes from Battle 50, all right, the 50th anniversary five years ago. And uh, it, was an, it was the time where not only it was my daughter's first time to compete at Battle of Atlanta, but uh, my son was only just a little over a month old. So it was his first karate tournament I ever uh, to, to kind of, you know, build off of that. Uh, it was also the first time that my daughter had a chance to meet some of her heroes like Jackson Rudolph. Reed Presley, Mackenzie Emery, uh, and just some others. And she also made some friends that year that have just become lifelong friends. So from a dad's perspective, on Father's Day weekend, I had to really just pick that moment. Fast forward to yesterday, <laughs> all right, five years later, my little boy competes at his first ever Battle of Atlanta, too. So uh, those, are, th those are my favorite moments. All right, well, in the comments, I would like to hear your favorite Battle of Atlanta memories, and I would like to see a video of your son's first performance. <laughs> I heard it was pretty legendary. Absolutely. And we'll be back after this commercial break. A good workout can be elusive, disappearing the moment you look away at some other interest in your schedule. Our attention is divided, and life moves quickly. It can pass you by, even as you're living it. But not you. You make it work. You make the time. The fighting spirit haunts you. And you want to keep it close. Right there in your home. Where you can keep up the fight. The perfect at-home workout lives on in a new age. The Century Ghost Wave Master. Ethereal design, real results. Back once again to the Battle Zone Countdown. I'm Jackson Rudolph, joined here by our awesome team. We're going to start making some predictions and making some picks about the Battle Zone Finals tonight. We're going to start with the forms and weapons divisions. Mary, earlier in the show, you were talking about some activism for equality for the women in this sport. Yep. So let's start by making some picks about them. Now, I am going to abstain from voting because I have a teammate and a wife in the women's forms category. Okay. And my teammate, Haley Glass, and my wife and teammate, Gabrielle Rudolph. But what do you think about that matchup? Traditional versus CMX, how do you see it going? Oh, boy. Well, I would like to first say that both of these ladies are incredible martial artists and humans, and I'm really, really proud to be friends with both of them. But I'm a traditional girl. <laughs> I feel like some people are surprised when they hear that. A lot of people back in the day when I was competing way more often usually think that I did more musical, but traditional is my core, and traditional is what I value the most, so I'm going to go traditional. Ooh. Gabrielle Rudolph is incredible, and I'm really, really excited for her, and, and she's got it tonight. She's got it tonight. Mallory, what about you? Well, you know what? I'm going to go exact opposite. You got Haley Glass, okay? okay. Starring in, uh, what was it? Logan, okay? Getting a first taste of stardom right there. Just coming straight off of a cruise ship where she performed okay. every single day. I talked to her earlier. She said that St. Thomas was one of her favorite destinations. She just absolutely loved. This young lady is meant for stardom. I'm going Haley Glass because of the power. Don't. I would not advise being in direct eye contact with Haley when she's doing kata. She looks absolutely fierce, but she's one of the sweetest people out here on this planet. I'm taking Haley. I agree with you, but she, like you said, she just came off of that cruise. Do you really think she could bring it tonight after being out of the game for so long? We will find out. Okay. <laughs> uh, 
Josh, what, what do you think about it? In the it, words of Lee Corso, not so fast, my friend. Oh, no. I am going with Miss Gabrielle Rudolph with the upset tonight. I don't know if you'd call it an upset, but I know a lot of times traditional CMX, right. you, you know, you, you really kind of feel like, I know a lot of the fans feel like a lot of times that it takes an upset for that trad form to really overcome a good, strong CMX weapons form, uh, excuse me, CMX form. And so uh, I really think that Miss Rudolph is going to pull it off tonight. And her husband's sitting two, two, two chairs down from <laughs> yeah, me, so don't I don't think I can ever, ever go against Miss Rudolph with Mr. Rudolph sitting next to me here. Hey, clearly Mallory doesn't fear me whatsoever. And not fight, at all. Fight not me. At all. Fight me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I don't want to. That's the problem. But, hey, in the women's division, we see that clash of the CMX, or so the right. creative, right. musical, and extreme competitors going against the traditional competitors in the finals. In the men's division, it's going to be a little bit of a different format mm -hmm. where they separate out separate grand championships for the creative musical extreme and for the traditional. On the traditional side, we've got a heavy favorite coming out there in Mason Stowell. He's been dominant over the course of the last few years. I think the interesting topic for conversation here is on the CMX side where you have the creative forms winner, which means that he's not going to be able to do any inversions, no acrobatics. Right. He's going to be able to do right. some aerial kicking, but not going upside down, nothing more than a 360. But it's been the truth, Jones, who is in that position. If there's anybody who can overcome extreme with creative, that would be the guy. His opponent, a teammate of his, Esteban Tremblay, the winner of both the musical and the extreme division, these two are very familiar opponents. They know each other very well. Yep. They are synchronized weapons partners, mm -hmm. and they've got to duke it out for the Forms title. How do you guys see that going? Josh, let's start all with you. All right, I'll kick it off, man. I'll tell you, what. first of all, what 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 three better athletes? I mean, three mm -hmm. of the best athletes I have ever seen. Uh, you know, I scouted professional baseball for years, trained professional athletes in the NFL. And I'm going to tell you guys, sport karate has some of the best athletes of any sport out there. And if you don't believe me, just be sure to tune in tonight and check it out. Uh, if anybody could overcome Mason, all right, it would be Esteban or Ben. Uh, but I have to go with Mason tonight. Uh, just uh, watching him, he just well, keep in mind they're in separate divisions. Separate divisions. That's what I was getting at earlier. That's what I was so getting at earlier. So we got earlier. Ben versus Esteban. That's the pick we're making here. All right, here. so Ben versus Esteban. I'm going to have to go with Ben the Truth Jones. Josh, we keep agreeing. Yes, yes. I was going to go with Ben, go too, because of the creativity. Absolutely. I like Very creative, creative over extreme. If you can be amazing and flashy even without flipping, I mean, come on. That's the best. Well, see, I'm going to go different. I'm okay, going to go. Okay. I'm going with my Canadian friend from up there, Mr. Hair Flip himself, Esteban. I passed his dad on the way here, right? And his dad, every tournament I see his dad at, he smiles wider and wider. That is, and speaking of Father's Day, that is a father who is extremely proud of his child. That's right. This is a guy who drove from Canada to the Warrior Cup, won the Warrior Cup, and drove home in the back seat, holding on to that Warrior <laughs> Cup. Boy, that's what Esteban does. Esteban's going to take this. I will bet all of your paycheck on it. <laughs> well, much like with Haley and Gabrielle and my conflict of interest there, with Ben and Esteban, I have trained both of those young men since they were eight years old. So I'm going to plead the fifth on having to pick between oh, the two of them. Ooh. I know, I'm boring. I mean, didn't I can't you train them in it. weapons? But I am going to make a prediction about the men's weapons division. Okay, okay? all right, fair. And the prediction that I'm going to make about men's weapons is that Team Paul Mitchell is going to win <laughs> that overall grand championship. I think that's Because we've thing. got Ben Jones... We've got Dawson Holt, we've got Esteban Tremblay, and they're up against from Team Diamond, the Black Mamba himself, Rashad Eugene. But hey, I've read the Bible, and the snake never wins, and we are going with Team Paul Mitchell to get that win tonight. Uh, I want to tell you what, all right, speaking of Mamba, all right, you know what they used to do, you know what Kobe used to do when they would pick at him a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm going to tell you, if there's anybody that's not going to back down from those three guys right there from a big, big challenge to overcome, it would be Rashad Eugene. I know he's going to bring it tonight. Um, I'm still going to go Team Paul Mitchell. I think one of those, those guys for sure pulls it out uh, as much as I love Rashad Eugene. And hey, don't get me wrong, I love Rashad too. This we is all, all do. This is all we all do. Games. That's right. Absolutely, 100%. Well, here we go again. Let's I'm going with Rashad. Who else can turn some bland sneakers into some absolutely fly kicks? But the man who has the creative talent, probably more than anybody standing in this library right now, is Rashad Eugene. What is he going to do? I don't even think he knows what he's going to do. He probably doesn't even exactly have a plan when he goes out there on stage. He just goes out there and freestyles and makes magic, make magic happen. True. That's why I'm going with the Mamba. 
Well, great perspectives from all over the board. But what we've got coming up next, since we obviously disagree about <laughs> some of these picks, we're going to settle it with a little putting competition. Oh, boy. And a little birdie told me we might have a Masters champion joining Ooh. us to show us how it's done. We'll be right back with the Battle Zone Countdown. Boom. Ooh. All right, we might need to move these chairs. All right. Yep. A good workout can be elusive, disappearing the moment you look away at some other interest in your schedule. Our attention is divided, and life moves quickly. It can pass you by, even as you're living it. But not you. You make it work. You make the time. The fighting spirit haunts you, and you want to keep it close, right there in your home, where you can keep up the fight. perfect at-home workout lives on in a new age. The Century Ghost Wave Master. Ethereal design. Real results. A good workout can be elusive. Disappearing in is divided. You make it work. Century Ghost Wave Master. Ethereal design. Real results. We are back here at the Battle Zone Countdown. I am here with 2007 Masters Champion mm. and your current Ryder Cup Captain. We've got Zach Johnson. He's got a son that competes in the sport, loves yes. sport karate. Yes. First and foremost, go ahead, give him a shout out. Oh yeah, my boy Wyatt Johnson. Man, he's tough. Uh, very focused, very driven. Loves it every day at home. He's in the dojo. Shout out to the Brick, Joey and his team there. Mm -hmm. uh, they do a great job. Uh, walking away with some trophies today. That's that's always nice here. Battle yes, of Atlanta. Yes. Thank you. Yep. And um, he's got he's had he's had some good uh, we'll say teaching in the teaching tree if you know mm -hmm. what I mean. Mm -hmm. Jackson. I love it. I love yeah. It. And that's a perfect segue because we've actually been talking <laughs> about one of Wyatt's instructors that trains him privately for the sport martial arts competition. Ben Jones is in the finals tonight. We were making some picks. Of course, I think Paul Mitchell's going to win. Mallory, for some reason, doesn't agree with me. But in that men's weapons final, I mean, come on, who's your pick? Oh, it's Ben. It's Ben Jones all the way. 
Southern boy. I know he's living up north now, but uh, gotten to meet him now uh, through my son, clearly. And um, love the way he teaches, and I love the way he walks it, too. I mean, he he, uh, he preaches what he teaches, and, and it's evident. And he's, he's so talented and a better person, you know, uh, off the mat. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more, like I said on the show earlier. Been somebody that I've known for a long time, so I've got all the respect in the world for that young man. But... Now it's time for us to settle some of these differences all right, all right. in our predictions with okay. a putting competition. So I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go up first because I've been I've been the one that's been pretty adamant about my picks. Okay. Right, right. So I'm gonna put first. The way this is gonna work is we're gonna start. We've got a couple of different markers back here: a two, a four, a six, and an eight. You get one putt from the first spot. If you make the first spot, you get to move back to the second spot. Make that one, you get to move back to the third and the fourth. Whoever makes it the furthest right. is going to be our champion. And the whole time, you get to provide some commentary yeah. on it, critique <laughs> critique our likely terrible putting form. But I'm going to go ahead and give it a try. Let's see how this goes. I'll trade you. All right, you let's see you, Jackson. Now, this will be Jackson. interesting. This putter does not look at all like a bow yeah. staff. <laughs> oh, I, oh, God. Uh, oh, look there it was. <laughs> Close enough. It doesn't quite That's have it. the balance he's used to. Walking back here, like I'm gonna I, yeah. I was going to say, if you want to start, start at the three-point three line, go ahead. This is a good training aid. This is what I would do in, in, in my warm-up right here. All right, he's lining it up. A little bit of shot at the tee, okay. It looks good. I mean, I can't can't uh, can't dissect that too much. Is there a penalty if you can't get down because your knee, because you but just <laughs> in the sport too much? No, that's just <laughs> called quit because ah, you're getting, yeah. Yes. <laughs> All right, looks like Jackson's lining it up. He's going to put. Oh, Whoa, and just six. One. All right, now he's going to move back to the uh, advanced line, there and let's go. see what he's going to get on there. He's got the ball lined up, nice little logo right there. He's rearing back, and he's going to shoot, lining up the shot. Goes up, and oh! oh. 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 Where's the Price is Right horn? Boom, boom, boom. I'm happy with one big putt. All right, right, Josh, hey. I do believe Come you're right. up next. All right, now Josh is unbuttoning his jacket because it's he's serious, time. you know. He is serious. Uh, oh, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. Yeah. Are, are props allowed? I did not I know the I props were allowed. I wear glasses when I play, so whether it's in or <laughs> out, right, here uh, he goes. yeah, that's Josh, fine. Oh. He's rocking the Jays. He's got everything going. I'm um, going to do this like my favorite golfer of all time, Happy Gilmore. Yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please stand back. <laughs> can't, can't, I can't argue with that. Watch the button throw. Amazing. Here we go. Uh, I think he might miss. Ooh, oh, oh, and he sinks the first one. In. Definitely, the price definitely is right. muscled it through. Oh, <laughs> and to quote Bob Barker, I, there was another word that came after that, yeah, but I we'll, can't, we'll, we'll reference that, that a little later. Oh, oh, and he sinks the second one. <laughs> it's got to be the shades. It's got to be the shades. It's not the form. It's not it's the form. The form seems to be working. I don't know, yeah, man. I, what would you call this form, Zach? What, what would you call I it? would call this unique. Oh, yes. <laughs> definitely unique. <laughs> oh! oh! And he sends a putt hey, to South America. Get it there. All right. That's right. Hey, I, nice. I, I will trade you uh, the putter for the mic, and I'll get up here and try to embarrass myself. Now, listen. Let's go, man. My last name may be Woods, but I'm not Tiger. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to get no that out the way is, right I now. I can assure you. Thank you very much, sir. Yes, sir. All right. So Let's we're do it. Start with the first one, right? Yes, sir. <laughs> if you can get it to stay, yeah, it's, uh, you can, you can handle this. Come on, be the ball. Mallory Woods for par. It's there good. We go. Nice. We're, we're three for three on the first I, one. I, I, I'm nervous. We, That's we a lot of play pressure. On the tour, right? He's done I, this I think. Before. I think. Uh, yeah, I think the qualification is coming up next week. So y'all, yeah. y'all need to. Oh, oh, oh a just scrub. a little firm. Well, Home run. run. So All right, far, here we go. We got, we got leader of the clubhouse. All right, I got something to say, though. Oh, yes, ma'am. Right, I have to give a shout-out to my cousin, Charlie Raleigh, because I've only ever played mini golf, and I didn't even know this thing existed. So he gave me a whole <laughs> private lesson on how to do this. So I really hope I do him proud. If not, I owe him 10 bucks. <laughs> how come I didn't know about this practicing that we had? Right? That, you know, uh, there, there's practice set up. There's putt-putt. I mean, I could have played Tiger. I do bring my PlayStation with hey, me. That, I could have, I, mean, I could have been yeah. playing in the room. Yeah. You know, my practice I, I came from watching rules. Happy Gilmore this Look, afternoon. There you go. Like the, the high heels are going to help set you apart right now. I think. Oh! Anybody see anything? I didn't see. Anything. I didn't see. I didn't see, I didn't see, I, I, see I, 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 the I mulligan. He called the mulligan, uh, right? Uh, yeah. And we we'll get the background noise. Oh, oh, oh uh, no! Good try. Well, good try. It's. But hey, don't, don't leave him hanging. Don't leave me hanging. Here you go. I'll tell you. I'll give you that. Now it's All right, let's oh, see. You're going to show oh, us yeah, what right, 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 right now we got God, the expats. So let's see if you could do it, though. All right. 
I, first of all, I like the shoes, man. Yes, Check them out. You know? I'm digging them. I don't know anything about what goes on in there. <laughs> but I, this, I have to set myself up for failure. But Sinks right. it. That's yep. one. That looked a lot easier than what we I did. did. I, I mean, did. I Look, my hands were shaking when I was nice up there. Nice and smooth. All right, let's see. Let's see. He's lining it up. Swings on now. Stinks wow. the second with two. no problem. Josh, your lead is in Money. jeopardy, my friend. Uh oh. Yes, hey, no pressure at all. No pressure. No, no try not to try right. not to provide any pressure. I like it. I like it. Oh, oh just three. Man down, man down. Is this guy an expert or something? He's done this. Before. Uh, uh, yeah, I think that's think so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, we got him all. I mean live in person. Uh, wow. Put drop. Wow, drop. That's it. <laughs> Now, Zach, how do you feel about your performance? I feel like I'm going to take this in the next week when I travel to Hartford and uh, take on, you know, all these young guys on the PGA Tour. And, and I'm, I'm, you guys just gave me a lot of confidence. So I appreciate That's that. That's what we're here for. <laughs> but, you know, more than that, though, I'm here for this event. I love these athletes, uh, men and women, boys and girls. Extremely impressive. I hope you all that are watching witness really what this is all about because they're phenomenal. Absolutely. Couldn't have said it better myself. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you. Sir. Thank you so much. Somebody's hey, going to get that golf ball. When we come back, we've got <laughs> one more round of picks here on the Battle Zone Countdown. We'll see you in just a minute. And we are back. We're back to one of my favorite segments. We're going to talk about fighting. It is the Battle of Atlanta, and of course, battle means fighting. This is one of my favorite parts of the show. Mr. Jackson, would you please tee up our combatants for this evening? Well, hey, Mallory, as much as I was a forms and weapons competitor, I was always a fan of point fighting. And tonight, we've got three fights that are sure to be fan favorites. Bailey Murphy headlines two of these fights. Yep. His opponents first in the open weight final. Mm -hmm. He'll be up against Tyreek Saint of Top 10 Team USA. They're friends. They're enemies. They've seen each other many times. We're going to see how this edition of the rivalry shakes out. In the lightweight overall grand, Bailey Murphy for Team Straight Up returns. He'll be against Tyson Ray of Team Next Level. Another one between two very familiar opponents mm -hmm. that is sure to be a thriller. And then we've got the heavyweights. Now, Bailey doesn't qualify to be a heavyweight because he is a lightweight. So in the heavyweights, we still have some straight up representation. Brandon Ballou of Team Straight Up will take on Devin Hopper. D-Hop. One of the most underrated fighters in the game right now for Team Dojo Elite. These are three thrilling matchups, Mallory. What do you think about them in general? Well, you know what? Going first with, uh, okay, so let's cover Bailey since we're covering Bailey twice. Bailey Murphy versus Tyreek Sink. Now, these two young men have been fighting against each other for as long. I think they met in the juniors. They're in adults. And I will tell you right now that I'm going to be pulling for Tyreek Sink. Why? Okay, Bailey Murphy, Bailey Murphy is hotter than the surface of the sun. He's been out there touring since he graduated college. He's spreading his knowledge all over the place. But what I will tell you right now is Tyreek Sink does not like second place. And there have been times before when listening to the rival, the rival, the very friendly rival that these two gentlemen have is the Tyreek. Once he, if he loses, 
all he can think about is avenging that loss. My pick tonight between Tyreek and Bailey is going to be Tyreek Saint from the great state of New York. I think that's a solid pick, but in the lightweights, do you think Bailey gets it back then? Does Bailey beat Tyson, or does Bailey take two losses tonight? Tyson Ray, literally, I've been around since he's been born, being teammates with his father, Jesse Ray. I remember talking to Jesse when he said, hey, my son was born, I'm going to name him Tyson. And I said, you know if you name him Tyson, he's got to be a fighter. <laughs> and that he is. I had the opportunity to spend a lot of time with this young man. He's going to Morgan State University in Baltimore, Maryland, but he's from New York. We rode together from a tournament in Philadelphia, and we talked for two hours. He is an intelligent young man. He is hungry for this game, and he wants to carve his name out. There are a few steps that he has to take, and that begins with the slaying of Bailey Murphy, who is the giant in his division at his time. Maybe a few years ago, it was Raymond Daniels. Maybe it was Nasty Anderson many years ago. But right now, that giant is Bailey Murphy, and he has to slay the giant. Will Tyson Ray get it done? I think right now from what I've seen this weekend, I'm going to have to go with Bailey from what I've seen, but there's always a chance for an update. My pick is Bailey Murphy. Absolutely. And one of my favorite quotes, and I think Josh Buford will appreciate this, is that if you want to be the man, <laughs> you got to beat the man, you right? It, and that is it. the situation where Bailey Murphy is, in the opinion of most sport karate fans, the best lightweight fighter in America right now. And so for Tyson and Tyreek, although they are great in their own right, they are building legacies of their own. In order for them to be the man, they've got to beat the man tonight. And as somebody who likes to think that I was the man during the weapons part of my career, Career, I got to go with the man. And I think that Bailey is going to be able to get the advantage of those matchups tonight, come out with a win. And Brandon Ballou's my boy. He's got a mean bow for him, so I'm going to roll with Brandon Ballou on the heavyweight mm. side. But a ton of respect to all those other fighters because they are all fantastic. Mallory, your final thoughts because we got to get to the battle zone soon. Yes. Well, you know what? Going for, uh, th I think I like, I like Ballou, uh, Ballou too for that choice. Ballou is a man who is a bulldozer. Joe Greenhall just says, go. And that's what it is. That's what I'm expecting tonight. Jackson, I'm going to let you go ahead and send it on off. Absolutely. Well, you guys do not want to miss this. We've had a lot of fun making these predictions, making these picks. A lot of great sport karate conversation. But now it's time for talk to be cheap. And mm -hmm. the most valuable thing out there is those athletes on the stage. All of the dust will settle here over the next few hours. Make sure you head on over to YouTube, the Battle of Atlanta YouTube channel. Hit that subscribe button. It is almost time for the Battle Zone. I'm Jackson Rudolph for Mallory Woods, Josh Buford, Woo. and Mary Amato. Let's get ready to battle.